Hello everyone, and welcome to a, another episode of FRC Sim 2016. Today we're going to be going over an important topic, which is tuning your robot. What I mean by that is getting the motors to behave the way you want based on your inputs, so it's realistic like, you know, your normal robot would be. So, I'm going to start off by opening up all the programs we need. We've got Eclipse, and then I'm going to open up a new terminal here and I'm gonna run FRC sim. I'm running it in a terminal that way I can get all the information that's printed out from it. You're also gonna want to open another terminal and run the driver station. You can see here it's detected my gamepad which I have plugged in. Uh, it's a simple Logitech F113 I believe. Most USB gamepads should work. Okay so I've gone ahead and created a new Java example project um, I use the motor controller example because it's easy and it will do everything we need. So if we open up that, we can see that it just contains uh, a motor and a joystick and writes the output to the motor based on the input of the joystick and that's pretty much it. Um, so all we're going to need you to do with this example code is make sure we have the right joystick access and make sure we have the right motor. So to find out what motor you want to use, you're going to look at the model for the robot you're using. In this case, we're going to use the Gearsbot robot. So I can go ahead and insert this. So if I open up a new tab and go to WPI Lib Simulation Models Gearsbot, we can see we have model.sdf. Um, that's the file we're going to want to look at it contains all the information about Gearsbot, and as you can see, it's really long. It's um, well, now you can see it's really long. It's 1,200 lines, um, but we only need to look at a tiny bit of it. The parts we care about are here, which is the joint for the elevator, and here, which is the motor for the elevator. The joint, or the elevator, sorry, is this part right here, the blue part that moves up and down. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to get that part of the motor to behave the way we want it to. And I think Eclipse has crashed, so I'm going to reopen it. Anyways, okay, so what information do we have here? Well, we have the topic, which represents the gazebo transport topic name that uh, speeds of this motor are published on. So this plugin subscribes to this topic, and five is the same as um, digital, or P, sorry, PWM output five on your robot Rio. So in your robot code, you're going to want to use Talon parenthesis five or Victor or or um, Jaguar. They're all the same in simulation. So we can uh, open up that code and make sure we have the right port number. And then the other piece of information provided in the SDF is this multiplier. So this multiplier says how powerful is your motor. So this says I believe the Newton's uh, units are Newton meters, so this would be um, full speed is five Newton meters. Um, but all this is kind of relative and not necessarily realistic. So if you're using a sim and you say, oh, well, it can only produce six Newton meters or whatever, um, you may need to actually have much higher or much lower than that in simulation. Um, because the masses and inertias of your models may not be perfect. The other piece of information we're going to want to look at here is the joint. So this is the J elevator joint. It's a prismatic joint, which means sliding or linear joint. A lot of this information we don't need to worry about. The concerning tag here is friction. So you're going to see when I start up the model, let me uh, change this back to the appropriate number. You're going to see when I start up this model what happens. Um, if we have uh, motor set at 5 and friction set at 0, which is, you know, unrealistic, but this might be what you accidentally did the first time around. So we're going to see what happens and how you can fix it. Okay, so I'm going to, now that I've changed and saved that file, I need to reinsert the gazebo or the Gearsbot model. Okay, hopefully Eclipse has woken up. Here we go. So notice I've made this 5. Um, I believe this joystick is fine and I've already changed this axis to be raw axis 1. 
but you can do whatever works for your gamepad. So, if we run this code, and we enable our driver station, okay, this is running. We can move the joystick, and hopefully we'll see some movement. Now, this is not what we want. So what I'm doing here is I'm moving the joystick all the way to the top, full speed up, and then back to neutral. But when I move it back to neutral, it falls to the bottom, which is not what we want. We want it to stay where it is until I move the joystick down. That's how your real robot would behave. And that's how we're going to make this robot behave too. So I'm going to start with friction. This model currently has no friction, which is very unrealistic since motors have well, mechanisms have friction, and motors have resistance to being back-driven. So we're going to simulate that by adding a whole bunch of friction. Let's say 10. The units for this and documentation on all these tags are available at SDF, excuse me, sdformat.org, and you can ask questions on the Gazebo Answers community website. But we're going to start with 10, because I happen to know that that is a good value. And then we're going to see what that does to our model. Note you can actually insert multiple models or multiple instances of the same model and they will retain their properties of when they were initially inserted. So this one is going to have the old friction and this one's going to have the new friction. But they're both going to move based on my robot program. So I don't have to restart everything. We're still good to go. So if I move my joystick up, you can see the other one no longer moves up now. However, it also doesn't fall by itself. So for example, I right click on this and I click apply force. And I apply a force to the elevator in the Z dimension of let's say 100 newtons. Well, maybe we need a little bit more than that. Okay. So notice it moves up when I apply very large forces, but it doesn't excuse me, it does not move down when I'm not applying a force, which is what we want. So we're part way there. The next step is going to be making the motor more powerful. So like I said, looking up the specs for your motor may not be an accurate way to tune your model in simulation. Sometimes you just need some fudge factor. So here I'm going to insert a number that's just a lot bigger. We're going to go up to 50 newton meters. Now this may not work, but it's going to be much greater and greater enough that I should see some movement. It's usually a good idea to guess big at the beginning or guess small if you're tuning something down and then pick numbers in the middle between those two guesses and eventually you'll get a number that works really well. Okay, so I've inserted that new model and now I'm going to move my joystick up again and see what happens. So as we expected, it moves really fast but it does stay true to its position. So, with one final adjustment, we can move this down to say 20. Insert another model. You can see my computer is starting to struggle a little bit with all of these models. Okay, but now if I move the joystick, let me uh, change the view here so you can see what's going on. So now we have the behavior we want. I move the joystick down gently and it moves slowly up and down. If I move it faster I can make it move more or less. Well we've more or less achieved what we want. So that's the general process for tuning one of your motors. Um, it's relatively quick once you get the hang of it. Um, and the important part is to make sure that you're editing this file carefully and not accidentally messing up uh, any of the links or the tags because they're all very special. If you do happen to mess it up, you'll see all the error messages printed out here. They'll be highlighted in red, hopefully. All this green text is just general information. So every time we insert a new model, one of these shows up. So again, all you need to do is use the example motor controller project, figure out which port, and edit your SDF file until the robot moves the way you want it to.